Boop, boop, boop. It's the snack that smiles back. Goldfish. That song is stuck in my head all the time. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest super entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name's Mike Royer. And this week, don't freeze. The Black Panther <laughs> I, trailer is here. I never freeze. Yes. The Punisher series gets an official release date, Mike. Okay. No more guessing. <laughs> is Fox faking everybody out? Ooh. We're going to talk about that and more. Yeah, and also that horrible uh, <laughs> Black Panther uh, imitation I just did. I don't even know what accent I was trying to do, but anybody that knows me personally knows I am atrocious at accents and trying to pretend to be other people, so I'm just going to let that one slide. That's, that's very true. I mean, But you did give me the idea for this, because when we started our call today, you were like, don't freeze. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, what? I guess it's more like... I. I never freeze. Yeah. Is that a little closer? A little closer? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think you're just poking a sleeping bear there, man. I just let <laughs> it go. I just let Chadwick, it go. Chadwick Boseman is just like hitting some sort of a, a tenor to his voice that's just like really like mesmerizing. When he was in Civil War, I just like couldn't take my eyes off him. It was like a little bit of like a man crush, I suppose. Yeah, well, I mean, he's supposed to be some sort of like king of a country. He's got some regalness about him and he, he carried regalness. himself really well. Yeah, regalness. That's the best way to explain it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I just looked over and my Inhumans pots are falling down because my cat probably attacked them. So, <laughs> um, but, anyways, uh, yeah, man. I tell you what, I got to start off our show with a couple shout outs. We might have a couple new listeners. Um, and they, they went out of their way to, to say hi and, and tell me they listened and appreciated the show. So, give some shout outs to Trevor. Um, I took photos of his parents' house this week. So, Trevor, oh, if right. you're listening, thank you. And Forrest. Um, Forrest is a mutual friend. Um, I met him I kind of rumored through a couple mutual friends, and he works at my local AMC theater. All and, right. And uh, I was buying tickets to see, uh, I don't remember, a couple, I think it wasn't The Princess and the Frog. It was something else a couple weeks ago. But uh, he was like, are you the Chris Dillard? I'm like, <laughs> yes. And uh, come find he works there, and uh, he... I don't know. I'm really looking forward to to meeting with Boris and watching a lot of movies because he likes to watch a lot of movies there. You're like a you're like that AMC's like number one fan. I am Keep coming I'm, in I'm, buying tickets. I'm always dropping money there. Well, it's, it's well, you time. you said they needed a shout out, so okay, here we go. Let me stretch a little bit. Okay. Oh shit! All right. Trevor, Boris. There you go. There Though you go. technically, I have been I have given shout outs. Do you? The, <laughs> Mike Mike went one step above and beyond and, and actually go. shouted it out. It was not a Star Wars shout, but it's close enough. That's mm-hmm. that's second the second tier to Star Wars. That means a lot. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, though, I do have to say I spent most of my week playing the new South Park game, a oh. fractured butthole. Yeah, love it. <laughs> gotta run it. Gotta run it together. The other way, it's it, it sounds funny. Uh, I am currently, I just looked, I'm 17 and a half hours into this game this week. Wow, nice. And I, every time I think it's over, another part unlocks. And I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, there's more to this game. So by them pushing it back like a year, year and a half, they've added so many levels. And I don't know, did you ever play the Stick of Truth game? That they- no, I, I never did. I, you know, I'm very familiar with kind of how the game like operates and the, the gameplay style. But yeah, I haven't sunk my teeth in any of them. So the Sick of Truth is all like medieval, like oriented, like, you know, Lord of the Rings style based. Mm-hmm. This one drops that in favor of superheroes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it picks up literally where the first one ends and takes place over the next several days. And it's the town still there. It's, if you play, you have to play the first one to play this one. It's just awesome because you're the same character. Oh wow! I didn't realize that those carried over. That's awesome. Yeah. So the first one ends, and then this one picks up right where that one ends, and it's really cool. So like all the the town's still there. Stuff you did in the first one still like reminiscent, like lingering around town. And it's just it's huge. I didn't think it would be this big. Like I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna be a great six hour game. You know, right? 17 and a half hours in i'm like there's more it just, <laughs> it just keeps going i still have stuff to unlock so i i expect another you know seven eight hours to play on it this week so i uh, gotta say i like it if you like south park if you like the humor it's all there and uh they introduced a social media thing called coonstagram because of because <laughs> of the coon and this is great so uh, superhero based game i like it i recommend it mike 
what did you go do? I, I like this is. I, this I like how you're. A, I like how you're. You're accusing me. Like, what did you do? Well, it's the earliest I've ever seen you awake. Um, or send me a text message in a, in a on a day, and it was a Saturday, <laughs> so I was very concerned for a minute. And then um, the the picture itself uh, was concerning. So go on, tell everybody what you did. Go on. <laughs> my, so uh, my wife and I made very poor choices this weekend and decided to uh, go ahead and dive deep and go see Geostorm. That's right, Geostorm, the disaster Roland Emmerich-esque movie uh, with Gerard Butler that landed in theaters this weekend. Um, uh, just to, to sum up really quick, we were we were really hyped about this film because we went when we went and saw the Inhumans in theaters, we saw the second trailer for Geostorm. And it just looked just ridiculous, like like ridiculous in the sense of like what is going on in this movie. I have no idea. This just looks like a train wreck that might just be a fun just uh, romp. So we decided we're going to go see it opening weekend, but we wanted to spend obviously the least amount of money as possible. So we went at 10 a.m. on a Saturday, very expecting to be uh, in an empty theater. But actually, it was it was pretty good turnout, I would say, for a Saturday morning for a movie like Geostorm. So I was a uh, I was shocked, but uh, to just uh, to report to cut to the chase, uh, very down the middle movie, which was the worst thing that it could have been. I was hoping for just something just totally awful, and there's maybe a glimmer of hope that it could have been some sort of shining disaster movie on a hill. I didn't have much hope for that, but it just landed like in the middle, and it was just like, yeah, you would if you saw this movie, as Chris always says, you would say it does not offend me. And yeah, there's really nothing offensive going on in here. It's just kind of like, eh, you know, there's there's plenty of parts in the movie that serve the China market, you know, that basically pays for the movie. Uh, there's some kind of cool scenes in space, you know, it feels a little bit like gravity, uh, gravity light kind of mixed with a bit of a disaster movie. Some of the disaster porn in the movie is kind of cool, but the, sto- the story is just kind of like ridiculous. The acting's like all over the place. Gerard Butler has a daughter in the movie that's, I think she's like 12 or 13, but like her lines are written like she's supposed to be like a 20 year old, like older uh, daughter or something like that. So she's saying like all these crazy things that no little kid would ever say. So very, very interesting movie. Um, It's like the perfect type of film that you would watch like while folding laundry and it just happens to be on like TNT if you still have cable. So, so that's how like long, the, that's how long are you folding laundry for, Mike? That's that's the real question. Oh man, I don't even I don't recall exactly how long the movie was, but it didn't really seem like a slog at all. Like I felt like engaged. You know, they they do a lot of since this movie takes a lot of this movie takes place in a space station, and there's also like a corresponding heroes on the surface of the planet. You're kind of going back and forth between the two, so you know there's some stuff going on there. Um, the I forget the actress's name, but she is going to be playing Domino uh, in Daisy Deadpool Beats. Two. Yeah, she she has a kind of like a, a small supporting role in the movie, and I don't know this off the top of my head because I never got around to looking it up on IMDb. But do you remember the goofy guy with the curly hair and in, in, in Misfits that that Hulu show that that show that was on Hulu? I I don't remember watching Misfits. No. So. Oh, okay. Well, I think one. I think he might have been in the movie, but it's hard because it's hard to tell because I haven't seen it in a while. So there's I guess there's some slight crossover between a superhero properties there. But uh, yeah, it just it has this crazy history of being pushed around like release dates. This movie was originally supposed to come out when Batman vs Superman came out. So they're just like, hey, we have this shitty Geostorm movie that's not testing very well with audiences. Uh, we need to move Batman Superman because we don't want to competing with uh, Civil War. Uh, let's go ahead and move Geostorm. So that got moved until later into 2017, I think. Or it got moved to 2017 because I think there was that kind of that, that other studio's Jungle Book movie that was going to come out. So they're like, oh, we got to get this out of the way for this Jungle Book movie that still hasn't come out yet. So it just got pushed around, lobbied around a lot. It was supposed to come out in a January at some point in time. Landed in October. <laughs> I saw it. I don't know what I was doing, but... Uh, th- I I would I would I can't I can't in good confidence recommend the movie but if you don't ha- but if you don't have to pay money to see it it's not going to be the biggest waste of time that's the best way I can sum up my very kind of confused thoughts on Geostorm all right. Well, I mean, you said it was a disaster movie to begin with, and I didn't know if you were just talking about the movie itself uh, or the plot. So I'm sure there's lots of puns from critics out there. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked at. I haven't even. Looked, I gotta look this up now. You have. You have spawned me 
to look up the Rotten Tomato score on this real quick, Mike, while we're doing yeah, we're doing it live. Um, <laughs> um, if you could guess a percentage, because you haven't I, looked, have you? I'm going to guess 40, 40. I'm going to guess 40. 13. Wow. <laughs> There's only one movie out, two movies out this week that are worse. Uh, oh. One is The Snowman. Oh, yeah, I've heard bad things. And... Uh, Boo 2, A Medea Halloween. <laughs> well, okay, I think that one's pretty obvious so, right there. I think the first one was like really well received, so that's that's what confuses me. Yeah, okay. But that's okay. Also, on a plus note, um, we got Spider-Man Homecoming came out on DVD physical this week. So I was able to pick that up as well. And well 4K, there you go. In 4K. So maybe go ahead and save those dollars for... Just go watch Spider-Man again. Don't go see Geostorm. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. <laughs> or or save it up and, and get the fractured butthole because you got a lot of you can have a lot of time to play that. So yeah, that's right. Well, we did some stuff this week, Mike. That's for sure. <laughs> but we're, it's time to jump into a little bit of news here because the we are horrible at picking dates for things, and this, this, <laughs> this show this week will definitely confirm that that theory. We thought the Black Panther trailer would come out. The week of Thor. I mean, we're like, mm-hmm. what, a week early? So we now have the official trailer for Black Panther. Not the teaser that we got earlier this summer, but the official trailer. And um, I gotta say, knock my socks off, Mike. Very Yeah, impressive. I mean, yeah, we weren't too far off with the prediction. And unfortunately, I mean, I like it when trailers drop on Monday just because it means I get to start my, my week with a trailer. But it sucks because we record this podcast, like, you know, hours before this trailer drops. So we might be getting to it a little late for you guys out there. But since it has been, you know, just about seven days, I've had a chance to get receptions from some other people out there. And I was actually shocked to hear people didn't like this trailer like this actually i've heard some people say this soured them on the movie they didn't like kind of how the suits glowed with different colors they just thought it looked like a rehash of like other marvel movies they had seen before and they just yeah they weren't looking forward to it and i was just really shocked to hear it and just by an extension they also didn't like the the poster that came out that we'll talk about here in a moment. So I just don't know if this is like the norm out there. I don't know if a lot of people don't hmm. like what they saw in the trailer, but I, I loved it. I thought it was so, rad. So <laughs> I, I, I tested more of an audience, like a non like superhero into it balls deep. Like we are audience. Like, mm-hmm. with it. And um, just casual viewers. They're fucking hyped for this movie, man. Oh, like, good. That's people, what I want to hear. Regular people are hyped for this movie. <laughs> and I've not heard a lot of bad reactions from the trailers. Now, my, my gut reaction is, yes, that the villain is essentially a palette-swapped color version of, of the hero, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which is standard Marvel trope for their first films, it seems like. Because um, Ant-Man did it. Iron Man did it. Um, you know, Doctor Strange kind of did it. You know, But, I mean, it's whatever. As long as it works for the story, you know? Because the Black Panther is a mantle everyone wants to be. It's like the king of Wakanda. That's superpowers mm-hmm. and... Stuff so I'm I don't know I'm really I mean although I I get it um, Michael B Jordan as this villain a uh, Killmonger looks pretty badass all around with his little uh, I think it's like a cheetah print on his on his on his helmet there he gets it yeah. whenever he puts it on yeah it's something but we got we get to see more of what the suits can do it looks like they can kind of materialize underneath clothing now so uh, I mean that kind of I I can I can buy into that because think- uh, we see a lot of Wakanda in this trailer. And it looks very high tech. There's like a mm-hmm. there's a shot where there's like a maglev like train going through the city. Uh, this I'm I'm almost more excited just to see the city than anywhere else. It, it definitely looks like a fully fleshed out world um, mm-hmm. that we and just when we think we've seen everything on Marvel's Earth, they're like, nah, here's Wakanda. It's been under like they're hiding, and um, and what's sad is this is the way the Inhuman should have been. Oh yeah, an <laughs> invisible city. With like you know lower caste and then higher upper class and a lot of technology and a king who's like revered and people want to be the king and in humans is just like you know a watered super watered down version of that. <laughs> it's uh, like the Kmart dollar store version. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's even lower than that. Like I mean, low of the low. But um, but that that gives me more hope for this one. Like it, it looks really cool. The invisible thing. I think um, one of um one of the door melage are flying with their hands out like not actually touching controls like yeah i saw yeah i saw that it looks like it maybe it's a psychic connection or or could be um 
technological Mm because it seems to be heading that way. So, yeah, it could be like some sort of motion tracking. Yep. It looks like we're going to see different upgrades to the suit over the film because um, at the part where he's he's told not to freeze, he puts the helmet on physically. But Mm -hmm. later on, we get to see what looks to be maybe vibranium, like more vibranium infused because he gets a a bluish purple um, neon hue to the suit. Yeah, there's a there's a very striking scene in the trailer where he kind of goes out into maybe like uh, into the wild into kind of like an open pasture with a tree and there's kind of some really uh, oh, yeah. uh, cool colors going on there and I, and I wonder if maybe we're going to start seeing some spiritual stuff come into here because you know that's one side of the Black Panther that we really haven't seen yet you know really leaning heavy into like this vibranium tech but we haven't really seen any sort of the spiritual powers that come from being the Black Panther so maybe maybe that's going to kind of uh, in, embed itself into the suit a little bit and maybe that's kind of where the colors come from i'm not too sure but yeah this trailer was really exciting uh we finally get to see uh claw with uh outfitted with some tech and that was kind of cool yep he has a sonic arm and his fingers like on his new arm split open and the gun comes out and he shoots it that was really cool also you know to kind of throw back to that thing you were just talking about the spiritual realm that's a a, like an homage to the lion king where like he's talk like simba's talking to mufasa and that's like the coloration of it Mm, if you want to want to know that and that kind of, to me, the soul stone is in Wakanda, and they're communing with the the dead. So that's where I'm leaning pretty heavily. Where the soul stone is, Mike. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's just a lot here. The music is two different songs um, put together. Like I think it's like the revolution will not be televised, which is an older um, song. And then I forget what's under it. The new the beat that's under it. It's a newer song. Mm-hmm. So I, I really like the music they're putting with these trailers. Um, really awesome. Like it yeah. just fits so well. Yeah, I'm just I, I just have to say like I'm I'm really digging the attitude that they're kind of giving to this trailer and to this movie so far. I don't obviously I don't know if it's gonna translate into the film because it's just a trailer and it's a piece of marketing. But yeah, I'm just really loving the attitude that I'm seeing and feeling. So uh, it's kind of funny. I haven't seen a kind of a Thor trailer TV spot in a while, but I feel like since this is brand new, it's kind of overshadowing my hype for Thor. So uh, who knows? Uh, this 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 looks really really awesome, man. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see it in in theaters uh, in the next coming weeks. Did you did you see it before Geostorm? No, it was not before Geostorm. Okay. I got another Gerard Butler trailer <laughs> where he's supposed to be some sort of gangland cop, but it does look it seems to be a heist movie, and we all know I'm a sucker for a heist movie, so oh, there we I go. might I might go see that. <laughs> there we go. Well, that's good. Also, we got a new poster and I think a friend of the show Quentin Parker may like this one a little more than the first one we got. It looks like the lighting's less fake on, <laughs> on these actors. Um, but it's also traditional like movie poster style like there's a black panther someone photoshopped iron man into it one of them like as a joke because of the spider-man ones Mm -hmm. um but i think it's funny that the this is all you know uh african slash african-american cast and we have two white guys (laughs) and they're both bilbo and Gollum from lord of the rings yeah, I think I um I think I saw the YouTube comments on this trailer and someone said like it's okay if the only white guys in the movie are uh Bilbo Bilbo and Gollum. I'll, yeah. I'll let it slide. So, I don't know. I think it, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Um they call them the uh, Tolkien white guys. <laughs> if you get that. I mean yeah, I mean this is like really cool. I love the vibe of the of the movie so far because like unfortunately like uh, like African Americans have never really had the chance to like think forward into the future and kind of have science fiction wrapped around their culture. And I, you mentioned it briefly, I think maybe before we started recording, but yeah, that's exactly what it's called. It's called Afrofuturism, and this mm-hmm. is like this is the most Afrofuturistic, like high budget movie that's ever been made, I believe. And it just looks so badass. It looks so cool, and I'm really looking forward to it, man. Oh yeah, it's a stellar cast, stellar premise. Um, really looking forward to it, and and the poster. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing this poster in movie, uh, uh, movie theaters when you come in. You know, like that's, that's mm-hmm. so hype. That's so hype to see that. Uh, also, this week the Black Panther comic, the movie prequel comic, the prelude mm-hmm. comic came out, and apparently the they show the scene where Tony Stark says, "I am Iron Man," uh-huh. and um, T'Challa had become Black Panther like a week before that. The official. Oh. So he's like, "You've only been Black Panther a week," and then that Tony Stark thing's in the background. So he's actually <laughs> been the character longer than we've known Iron Man. Well, this season. is this is uh, going to factor into that 
timeline we talked about last week with Feige putting mm-hmm. together. So it looks like some of the pieces are kind of falling together for that timeline. But yeah, I like the idea that he's kind of seasoned. He's no, He knows what he's doing. He's not putting on the Black Panther suit and hoping there's some sort of AI in there yeah. helping him like Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But I, I love the suits. I love the idea of this movie. And I, I really think the execution is going to be great because between you know Taika Waititi's film coming out this year and then um, is it Ryan Coogler's Black Panther? Like we've got some really fresh, interesting directors, and it yes. looks like they're going to be able to to kind of give us something something a little different, something a little cooler. So I, I think I think you guys got if you haven't watched this trailer, a you're not going to be able to avoid it between Thor and Star Wars this year. So you just got to go watch true. it. Very true. And the hype is real. Mike Mike will agree the hype is real for this movie. I, I will attest. <laughs> <laughs> He's there. Um, due to the popular reactions from Mike last week, watching the Star Wars trailer live, <laughs> we're actually going to do a live iteration of the Punisher's trailer that just came out, the trailer number two. I yeah, feel like this... we just got trailer number one like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, like... exactly. And this isn't intentional. I just never got around to watching it. So <laughs> you, usually I kind of watch these before we start recording the show and we're just like, hey, let's just watch it live. So I was like, okay. And like this one, uh, expect less out of me. I, I know, it's not I Star would, Wars, yeah. Yeah, it's not Star Wars. And this is like the second trailer of Punisher. So we'll, we'll see We'll see how it goes. Can I, can I de-hype this anymore? <laughs> yes. So I think we're going to go ahead and watch it. We're going to start here in uh, about three, two, one. Let's give it a go, Mike. All right, there we go. We finally got our release date there, November 17th, which is the day after my birthday. So I guess oh, thank you for the thank you for the late uh, 30th uh, birthday present there Netflix, but uh, this the first reaction I get out of this trailer is this seems to be probably going to be the first real like kind of drama series I feel like we're getting out of Marvel. I mean, I guess some of the other trailers has shown us more kind of like gritty action, kind of uh, bullets and violence. This had a mood to it for sure, if I had to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, very, very dark, very somber. Looks like we're going to get a big look at his past for sure. I do kind of like how he already has this moniker of the Punisher. You know, we've kind of set him up and have exposed him to society in Daredevil, so we don't really have to go through all of that minutia. He kind of already has that stigma and fear behind his name yeah so i do like i do like that we're kind of just gonna jump right off the bat and run into that uh there's an interesting moment there he had on the on the floor with under bullet fire with uh claire is that her name no I remember right karen. uh karen that's right sorry that's fine. uh so that looks like he was kind of getting uh he's put getting a little close there so i don't know if uh maybe uh that's gonna end up being a love interest going forward or she's gonna take a larger role in the series but yeah this very much felt like a trailer number two just kind of elaborating more Mm -hmm. on what we've already seen kind of showing us a little bit more of the tone uh yeah i don't know i don't know if this is gonna hook me as much as some of the other shows have hooked me because they're they've been very much superhero shows this almost seems like a, a like a gritty cop drama which who knows it could be very very good but you know how do you make a good trailer for like a gripping cop drama you know so uh i don't know some of the other trailers have been awesome uh this one is just a little less exciting i think it still looks good but yeah just less excitement behind it i guess well i think i think it's it's different it's i mean and that's the thing with this is you can always pick like lately i mean with the thor trailer the black panther trailer the punisher trailer um even the defenders trailer you can pick the tone they're kind of going with in that, mm-hmm. and they all feel different. Thankfully, like you, like it's not the same trailer cut for every show. Mm-hmm. So I, I do appreciate that. You know, it's like, hey, this isn't the Defenders. Like this isn't you know Daredevil. Like you, this is definitively the Punisher. And for people who like the Punisher, because if someone listens to Metallica they, regularly, they probably <laughs> like the Punisher. Do they like guns. They probably like the Punisher, Mike. Yeah, is, there's there's a lot of crossover here in what the Punisher does and the audience that might watch it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's definitely, I mean, if you're a military person, you probably like the Punisher. Like, there is a, it, it knows its audience here. If I was, mm-hmm. like, it knows exactly who, who it needs to target to, to get out there. Uh, what I really like about this is, like, some of the Easter eggs and, and little bits you get to see a little bit. Like, um, you get to see Frank's battle van in one of the scenes. Like, a big black van that he, like, travels around in, like, whenever he goes and does stuff. Mm-hmm. So I mean he 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 could definitely venture out of New York uh, for the for this show and that's kind of a rumor we've gotten that he's gone outside of New York a little bit to to get his punishment uh, to his <laughs> punishing uh, and also we don't really ever see and of all the punishers that we have out there like 
Frank Castle was broken while he was in the military. Like mm-hmm. it looks like they made him some sort of hitman or like a special, like like a some special special operations guy because mm-hmm. he looks like he's in there and then like he decides not to to go with that and then that's what causes them to come out and kill his family and go after him. So seeing like him broken before his family was killed is definitely a twist we we've yet to see. Um, yeah, I'm, it looks like it's coming out here in a couple of weeks. So I wonder if. Uh, going back, rewatching kind of the first half of Daredevil season two would benefit to watching this show because there is like a small moment at the beginning of the show where he's kind of dealing with that gang. And then that kind of trickles in later in those like first like six or seven episodes where he goes back and he finds like an old military boss or something like that. I just, I, I can't remember his backstory super well from what happened in Daredevil. So Maybe that might be he, helpful. He, he has a history, and I think, like, they kind of, like, hey, like, you were set up on this mission. Like, you know, he was, like, oh, Frank Castle's crazy and stuff. But, like, they come to find out, like, you know, he was set up kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I think this is going to d- dive into that harder and, and let us know what exactly happened to, to make him who he is today or mm-hmm. who he is in, in the universe. And I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see it. It looks like, you know, they've up. we don't really get a, normally a lot of weapons in our, our Marvel Netflix shows. Um, but definitely seems to be a lot of guns going on here. Yeah, they won't have to worry about uh, portraying superpowers uh, too much. They won't have to, like, do we have the budget to have Luke Cage throw a car in this episode? Yeah. It's just like, oh, we might. It's like, oh, well, do we have the budget to have Punisher shoot guns? Yeah, he could, like, literally shoot guns for 60 minutes for all 13 episodes. Yeah. We can make it work. That's a, that's <laughs> a plug-in online. We're just clicking where the guns are from for now on. Like, you yeah. have to have real bullets. Um, also, uh, just you know, kind of add on to that, like, I don't. We don't know who the villain is yet. Like uh-huh. very, it's not a very distinct villain in this. So um, it's kind of focused on him and, and some of his battles. So I there's a little there's still some mystery to the show. So I'm uh-huh. I'm looking forward to it. They 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 they've got me hooked on the mystery alone. Maybe not so much as you know, like you said, like the other shows. But I I want to see what goes on. I want to see what's happening. So cool. Um, yeah. So that's November seventeenth. Uh, that's a week later than Mike predicted. And about a month later than what I thought we would get, but you know, due to the unfortunate events, that was kind of pushed back. So uh, we'll talk about this November seventeenth date. It's got a very important relevance later on in the show, Mike. So we'll, we'll break that down. Yeah, all right. You mentioned to going back and seeing Daredevil season two. Well, Daredevil season three gave us our first teaser this week on the Daredevil Twitter. Ooh. Um, with just the text, "I'm fine." Um, over a little video of, um, in loving memory of Matthew Murdoch. Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. This is Proverbs. And it swats between text and braille back and forth. Mm, gotcha. So, um, you know, at the end of the Defenders, spoiler alert, he's presumed killed. Well, he's not. Um, he's, you know, in the care of what appears to be his actual mother, who's, who's a, a nun. Mm-hmm. And um, this is like the first he's like, you know, he's he's really fine. We don't need to have like a memorial service for him. I guess is what yeah, this is kicking out. Yeah, I think uh, it's been heavily rumored and probably pretty close to confirmed that the plot that we're probably going to be dealing with in season three is his identity getting out, possibly by the kingpin. I don't remember the exact title of that story arc in the comic books, but um, there was a character with uh, named Nuke who was from Jessica Jones that mm-hmm. maybe he'll come in. But uh, so yeah, I'm wondering how exactly you expose the identity of Daredevil. If you think that that person's dead, you know, so how does that work? Is he going to be kind of like, is Matt Murdock going to be working from the shadows and like trying to keep his identity from being exposed, even though he's dead or what's going on there? So, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering how long that's going to last into the season. How long is he going to be dead for? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think that they might get that out of the way, but yeah, it's definitely on the, the series called born again. Um, yeah, that's also, what it is. Yeah. 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 Um, which is all the characters are in place for the show. Uh, for mm-hmm. this this story to be told, and yeah, I don't know, I don't know what they can do. It's I I always look to just our Batman v Superman, Superman and Clark Kent was able to die without them both finding out who he was, mm-hmm. um, even though he looks the same. This one has glasses. <laughs> I, f- I feel like this is maybe slightly more believable, just because like everybody knows that Superman died, but I don't think anybody's totally confident that 
you know, the red devil of Hell's Kitchen could be dead. You know, he could be out there in some way. You just haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't know who it is. Someone could take up the the, the mask and hide in the shadows mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. So I, I don't I don't know how they'll play it off. But I um of all, I think I'm except for Jessica Jones the most Daredevil season three and then Luke Cage season two out of the the next upcoming shows I guess. So I don't know. I'm excited. I like Daredevil. Daredevil kicked it all off. Let's keep going with it. Yeah. So he's fine, guys. Don't worry about him. Don't, <laughs> don't send don't send flowers. Make a donation instead. Thor Ragnarok is right around the corner, Mike. We are less than two weeks away from Thor Ragnarok. I am mm-hmm. so excited. I am avoiding all all videos and rumors and details and everything. TV spots. I won't click on them. I won't watch them, Mike. I'm 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 shut off. <laughs> um, and it's very hard to do right now because they're doing a marketing blitz like nothing else. Um, but we, I did send you a video of Jeff Goldblum responding to people tweeting at him uh, from Thor, and he's just, he's just going on a rant or like, a, like <laughs> some goofy like tangent for like two minutes before he gets wow. to the answer, and it was just I'm, beautiful. I love Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> so um, Kevin Feige, he won't say where Sif is during the film, so I don't know if he, she's in the film or she's not in the film, but he's yeah. tight-lipped about this character wherever she may be. Yeah, that that almost seems like. Either somebody asked him, like, hey, Kevin Feige, I have access to you, and I've noticed in the trailers that we haven't seen Sif, or somebody that has already seen the film since it has premiered went, hey, Sif wasn't in this movie. Where is she? So maybe she's an agent being moved into a different movie or something like that. That could be kind of cool. Obviously, all these Marvel movies are cross-pollinating, so... We did, I mean, we last saw her on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. instead of a movie. So, yeah, that's true. If you think she was going to go to another movie, where do you think it would be most logical to see her in? I say take her off the board for Ragnarok and save her for the Avengers. Oh, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Um, because if she's not around, if it, I don't know if this, if she's in the movie or not, but if she's not in the movie because Loki's kind of been in charge and Thor's been off world, she's off world. Maybe she's safe from all the damage and harm that, you know, Hela may cause. So mm, maybe they, they won't have to worry about her there because they have Valkyrie. Um, kind of fill in, maybe fill in that role, but like having them both come together in one of the Avengers movies and you know in dire need would be pretty awesome. See two Viking, you know, Norse chicks fighting over, like you know, saving the world. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, we I don't know if this has been rumored before out there, but I mean, I know we are supposed to be getting some sort of DC female centric um, movie. What was that? The the Gotham City Sirens. Yeah. So maybe they're kind of like saving her in the back pocket for maybe some sort of Marvel version of that. Like, let's get all of our female heroes together and just do some sort of awesome team up. So I don't know. Maybe they're they're holding her back for that, but I don't know. Maybe they're just saving her from the trailers because she's going to do something badass and Marvel's doing yeah. us a favor and not just showing it. So. It's true and also um i I think you know with cosmic being the focus of marvel beyond phase three she's a cosmic character travels to earth and asgard and all (laughs) other plus so i could definitely see her being a big phase four you know can can she can she breathe out in outer space because i do like the idea of her in a spacesuit because i just think it's really funny because she just wouldn't understand why she's wearing it like she's got to go help out captain marvel but she's got to put on a spacesuit or maybe she's got to go pal around with the guardians of the galaxy and she's just like but how am i gonna take my sword out into space or something I well don't know. <laughs> if, if if the avengers infinity war trailer is to set a precedent for asgardians mike thor is in space when they find him Oh yeah, that's right. So as guardians may be a little more immune to being out in space, or <laughs> they just have to be there at the right moment. I don't know. We don't know. A little bit more. A little bit more beefed up. <laughs> a lot of questions. But in an unprecedented move for us, Mike, I have unprecedented <laughs> Thor collector Thor Ragnarok collector's core box right beside me, Mike. Of course you do. I mean, how much? Like you should start doing an equation of like on a weekly basis, like what square footage. Are you losing due to pop just like every week? You know, thankfully <laughs> releases aren't every week, so I, I I can go like it's usually like when a big movie comes out or my box <laughs> comes in. But this is the Thor Ragnarok box, and I'm gonna I want to go through it here on the show, Mike, because I've Ooh. only kind of peeked in it. So first and foremost is a it's a smaller box than usual, but on top is a beanie hat. Ooh, like I can here. I can hear it, Chris. I can hear the beanie, and it's got a patch with the Hulk, Gladiator Hulk on the front of it. So if I want to represent the Gladiator Hulk, uh, well, there you go. It's on there. November Ooh. might be cold. You might need the beanie. Might might be. It's not here yet. 
Um, some magnets, some Thor Ragnar. I've never seen magnets in these boxes before. They've got the pop versions of Thor, Loki, Hulk, and Hela on them. Yeah, all right. Uh, how's cool. the Hel- How's the Hela pop? That's the one that I'm kind of curious about. Um, is, does she have like the extended kind of antlers on, or is she like oh, kind of more trimmed down? There's two. So she does have the extended helmet on, and the one I have, and then there's an unmasked version that's a Target exclusive that's not out yet. Oh, gotcha. Uh, which is like from the trailer when she like breaks the hammer. That version with like the long hair. Cool. Um, so, oh, here's something new I've never seen before. A collector core fidget spinner with the characters <laughs> on it. Of course. Oh, I can hear it spinning. Get that close to the mic. Get oh, that close to the mic. It's right up on it. Oh, Ooh, yeah. I can hear it. Well, this good... really feel. This really feels like an advertisement at this point. <laughs> it, well, it should, I hope they do pay. But I, I really like this. I'm, this is this box is. I've never seen this stuff in a box. It's usually like just like here's some more other little collector figures. Okay, but the real thing here is the pops and and this box. Is a treat because it comes with two. Two Ooh. pops in one box. First up, we have Thor with his little mace and shield from the trailer. Like when he flips up his helmet. Mm-hmm. That looks pretty awesome. And then lastly, we have Loki. There's a Loki in the box, Mike. Um, oh. Gold, full gold antler helmet and everything. Huge. Mm. Huge. And his bright blue daggers from the trailer that he was flipping around. So, wow, these are these are pretty solid. You know, if you get two pops, you know it's a good box, Mike. That's, that's, that's really that's that's really how I know it's been a, been a good one. The so, Thor Ragnarok hype is strong. Oh shit, there's more in here. Playing cards. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok playing cards. This this is a this is definitely stuff I've never seen before in a box. And the I gift like that keeps on giving. Yeah, oh, all that all that plastic. So now um, the next one, the next December box is just the Hulk, Mike, based on the Hulk. Ooh. So uh, that's really cool. Hulk's making a comeback this year, 2017 year of the Hulk. So uh, I had that box here, and I, I thought it was ironic that we were talking Thor Ragnarok. So that's that's awesome. So uh, is it ironic or is it just convenient? Um, <laughs> coincidental. There you go. That's a nice, nice minute in the middle. So if anyone wants to see pictures of that, let me know. I'll put them up. I'll probably take pictures of the pops because they are pretty awesome and um, ready for Thor Ragnarok. Um, then make sure you get your tickets. So. Ant-Man and the Wasp, um, there is some details on this movie, and it's supposed to show what happens to Scott after it happened in Civil War, the Wrath breakout. Um, yeah, I thought this was really interesting because I, I have not thought about the end of Civil War when um, when uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers, is in front of all those cells again, basically insinuating that he's there to break them out. But I just, I'd never thought about it again. I just assumed when we got our next Avengers movie, they would just be kind of be out on the run, on the lam, doing kind of like underground Avengers stuff. And like in passing, someone would say like they broke out or something. I Yeah, I never really thought about getting more detail on that, so... Yeah, this is an interesting experiment to think about. What do you what do you think happens? So, to this this rumor here, and and this is a rumor, but Scott is apparently under house arrest. Um, which if he goes from being like wanted by the like the you know Earth's government at that point mm-hmm. to being a, a land and house arrest, maybe he struck a deal with somebody or something. Um, Scott didn't really want to be the superhero at the end of the day, you know. Mm-hmm. So maybe like you know what, if you work. Or if you promise not to do anything and just stay in your house and don't use your powers, you're fine. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. I like to imagine myself uh, that uh, Janet Van Dyne. Um, that's her name, the Wasp, right? Uh, yes. A uh, hope. Yeah, hope I, is. Hope, Jan- hope Janet Van Dyne. Is the sorry. That's right. I like to imagine that she just like sneaks into the raft on her own with her suit and she just kind of like busts out Scott before like any of the other heroes get rescued because they've kind of established that kind of. Uh, uh, Pym and his family, they don't really want to rub shoulders with the Avengers, but, you know, Scott is just, like, a fun guy that likes to go out and help people, so he will. So I like to imagine, like, they go in on their own and, like, bust him out, and, like, Falcon's just kind of over there, like, hey, come on, help a brother out, and, he, and like, he just gets left there, and he's just like, oh, sorry, they're busting me out. There's nothing I can do to you. I can't, I can't make you smaller and sneak you out. Or maybe they all sneak each other out. I don't know. That'd be kind of fun. But I do like the idea how we do get a get, get maybe a little angle on that before we kind of yeah. see what happens in Avengers. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. Well, it's funny you mentioned that Hope and Hank, Hope Van Dyne and Hank Pym, are apparently mm-hmm. working in a shrunken down lab to find Janet in the sub universe or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they're also on the run from somebody, so they may very well be, you know, oh. something related to that. 
I could totally see like Hank Pym just like screw the establishment. We're busting out Scott from this bullshit prison. I don't give a shit if they chase after us. We're super scientists. We're not going to bend to their will. Yeah, and, <laughs> so, well, and it, they they set precedent in the first uh, Ant Man film that you know Hank does not like Tony, uh, not Tony Stark, uh, but his dad very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, uh, he didn't punch him, but like he probably would have given, <laughs> given, yeah, given the situation. So yeah, I I like this whole dynamic. They're kind of like these rogues. And, like, the first Ant-Man movie was a heist film, so maybe the beginning of Ant-Man and the Wasp will be a breakout film. And our prison break movies are, like, awesome. Like, some of my favorite episodes of TV shows and some of my favorite movies deal with, like, prison breaks because it's, like, the opposite of a heist, almost. Or it's basically the same minutia. You gotta craft a plan, you gotta execute it, you're stealing a person instead of, like, stealing gold. So, I really like this idea, so I hope it, I hope it so, works. So, you're telling me that in shot of Captain America at the end of Civil War walking into the light is just a very shrunken down version of Captain America. <laughs> or maybe, ca- or, or maybe I don't remember. So I don't remember the exact scene because I know he's there and he's looking at the cells, but I don't remember if we get a good look at all the cells. You know, maybe, um, maybe like right before it cuts, like, uh, like uh, Scott Lang just like shrinks down and just like basically disappears in a cell and Cap's like, uh, what's going on there? <laughs> huh. Yeah, like but, just misses him by a second. Yeah, so. that's that's my uh, that's my idea. Uh, you can send the check to me, Marvel. I'll send out my address. Um, well, I got a Venmo. They'll, pr- they'll <laughs> probably send a cease and desist letter because they, they probably think you're stealing stuff. No, I probably got it right, man. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, someone looked at it. Was it Hawkman or Ant-Man who looked at Captain America at the end? I can't. Hawkeye, not Hawkman. I don't remember who. I'm going to have to go back and watch that, Mike. I'm off to work this week, so I'm going <laughs> to go back and watch a couple of these. There you but go. But Ant-Man and the Wasp is going to fill in some of that filler for us, Mike. We don't have to wonder for too much longer. Um, and maybe the prequel comic will tell us some more. So, Deadpool two gives us a little little sneak peek here. Uh, Ryan Reynolds short, shared a picture, and it might have a little uh, s- like not spoiler, but secret in the background there. Yeah. So we see all these Deadpool suits of different kinds, and, and not really different colors, except for two, two very very gray, black and white suits there in the middle. Mm-hmm. And if anyone knows, the black and white Deadpool suit is specifically from his X-Force run, which is also being crafted into a movie. So do you think we might see Deadpool wear different suits throughout this movie this time, since he only had the one in the first one? And I don't obviously know. I mean, they have a bigger budget this time. Yeah, but... <laughs> I mean, I guess it just it's like, do you think this production and this like van and this rack is just like sharing production with the next X Force movie, or maybe just since there's only two suits out of all of those suits that have been manufactured, maybe it's just very brief at the end of the movie he puts on a new suit, basically preparing everybody for X Force. Maybe it's an after credit scene or something like that. But I just want to know if this photo is like intentional. You know, like obviously people working on set have like seen those suits like every day for weeks you know they are just total it's totally blase to them but like to us we're just like holy shit those suits in the background are white we can see them Mm. so it's just like do you think ryan reynolds does that on purpose i could see him doing it on purpose because he's he's sneaky like i think when the film rap production he said that every picture he'd post would have some sort of easter eggs in it oh um and this might be one the one of them uh we could be reading into this way too hard um because i know they have to have different suits for different colors for like to match color match the film and that's so, what we're here. Well, that's what we're here for, Chris. We're here to dive into things a little too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some of those suits in the back look very clean, and the ones up closer to them look very, very rough. So mm-hmm. they might be in terms of like, hey, how clean of a suit do we need for this shot? Okay, yeah, maybe, go whip yeah. out one of those. But I mean, it's just with X Force definitely on the horizon. Um, that's that. That's way too coincidental to me mm-hmm. to be there in the middle. So whether he wears it in the middle or like, hey. He opens up a closet and has a bunch of Deadpool suits in the movie. It'd be pretty funny. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, we just never, we never saw any different ones in the first one, so. Yeah, I think the big question is, is what joke does he make to justify changing the color of his suit? That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Definitely some sort of skin color joke if I was a betting man. Because Domino's in this movie, and her skin color is known for being black and white. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, also confirmed, Josh Brolin has signed a four-picture deal to be Cable. Oh. Um, so Deadpool 2 we presume X-Force and Deadpool 3 uh, I don't know what the fourth one would be offhand maybe maybe it could be another X-Force movie or maybe 
maybe they're just trying to build to some sort of giant like just x-men crossover you know they're like hey we got these new x-men movies we got some new mutants throw in some time travel get them all land up on the same time zone and just like fight it out i don't know yeah i could also see maybe him <laughs> them resetting the timeline again with cable <laughs> in dark phoenix 2 or whatever um yeah screw it just do it just go ahead and do it <laughs> yeah or if they have to bring him into one of those movies to show it's a shared universe rather than um, Deadpool. No, uh, maybe. I don't know. I, we, I honestly don't know. But four pictures, and we definitely know three of them. So, um, I don't know. I, I think he looks good as Cable. A lot of, I, I heard someone at the comic books where the other day be like, no, I don't, I'm not really, the, he could have got somebody better. I'm like, I don't know who I would cast after seeing him. Like, he looks the part yeah. after you look at him. So Yeah, Josh Brolin's awesome. I wanted him to be our Batman. But uh, if we can't get him as Batman, Cable's a uh, good runner-up. <laughs> yep, and Thanos is definitely even better. Yeah. That. So uh, as long as we forget he played Jonah Hex, we'll all be okay. <laughs> uh, and like I said, Dark Phoenix, uh, there's a set rumor going around for Dark Phoenix, Mike, and I need your ears on this because... <laughs> you need it. I need it. So there's a scene they were filming recently that had like some big cast members, Professor X and Beast and I think maybe even Magneto. They're making some sort of like conference, like like announcement conference like to the world maybe or somewhere Mm -hmm. and these aliens attack this conference aliens but the rumor is people on set saw these aliens and they're not labeled as she are the -hmm. the logical aliens for accident they're labeled as scrolls mike well i feel like label wouldn't even matter because wouldn't these wouldn't those two aliens be so visually different that you would pretty much tell right away well if i think they were like scrolls? C- i think they're cgi suits like the gray suit man. oh okay yeah i could see that um yeah it makes me really curious because like the last time we talked about scrolls it was captain marvel and yes. we know that Marvel is allowed to use scrolls, but they're not allowed to use the super scrolls, right? Well, super scroll is just a char- like any named specific scroll. Mm-hmm. Uh, a super scroll is one, and then the queen skull Veronke is another one. Mm-hmm. Um, ironically, Veronke is green skinned with bright red hair, and Jessica Chastain is in this movie, and who happens to have bright red hair, oh. and is playing an alien leader. And she said she's not Shi'ar a couple months ago when we talked about it. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was kind of just looking forward more to the Shi'ar because it's just something that we hadn't seen, it you know? It fucking makes sense. Don't, like, if they go <laughs> scrolls, this is, there are two things here. One, um, David Goyer, is it David Goyer? No. I forget who's doing this one. He, he was the, the writer. It might be. No, it's not Goyer. <laughs> Either way, does not know how to do a faithful comic book adaptation whatsoever, okay? Mm-hmm. Secondly, is this are they just putting it in there to beat Marvel to the punch now that Marvel's done it? Because they did mm-hmm. the same thing with Quicksilver in Days of Future Past. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, with Quicksilver, it's just one character, you know, they, they, they both ended up having visually different looks. You know, they had a, they had a, the similar power, well, but it, it seemed to go all right, you but, know, for the most part. But the problem was they, they'd already cast that role as the Juggernaut and had it in the script as the juggernaut marvel said we are doing quicksilver they changed they they fired the actor changed it to quicksilver just in spite of marvel <laughs> because um oh my gosh i don't know if you remember x-men i think it's apocalypse um or did you read the guy who plays the young striker in apocalypse um the william striker the the military mm-hmm. guy who kidnapped him yeah he was cast as juggernaut in that movie so oh, to wow. make it up for him, they made him striker in the second one because he looks like a young Vinny Jones, if you look at yeah. him. Yeah, wow, man. Okay, uh, walls are crumbling right now in my brain. Yeah, but do I, I think, think Fox the... is petty enough to do that? Yeah, fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> Absolutely, which is not a good sign moving forward because we, we, know, we kind of thought in our head at some point in time that maybe they would play nice and cross over, but it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. Uh, but the thing is, the scrolls for me make more sense with Captain Marvel and less mm-hmm. sense with X Men. And also, scrolls are very visually, um, visually stand out. You know, they kind—it's of, almost kind of like a Klingon, if you will. They kind of got that weird, ridge, rigid chin, and they're green, and you know, they're they're very visually distinct. So if you have an X Men movie showing the scrolls, and then you have a Captain Marvel movie showing the scrolls, I think that actually will confuse people that maybe aren't up on this. But but it's just kind of like they might think they already exist anyway, so maybe it doesn't but, matter but with those people. Like you have like the Shi'ar are essential to the X Men like lore and mm-hmm. franchise. Like why even go 
why even go that way? Like, like you had a better choice to begin with. So I don't know. I, I unless just... unless maybe this is like a slight like bait and switch. Like maybe maybe they actually are legitimately scrolls that show up and attack this like conference, and then we think like, oh my god, these aliens are big and badass. And then maybe the Shihar come in and just like super easily like wipe out the scrolls, and then we never see the scrolls again. And it's just used to show that the Shihar are like badass and they're here and they mean business and they're the biggest aliens in the galaxy and they'll kill anything in their way. I mean, that's kind of one way to make it happen. Happen, but man, I don't know, man. I was hope I was hoping to see some chromed out aliens. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was too, and and you know, obviously letting Marvel use the scrolls and not have not have any sort of competition. I guess um, it, at this point, it kind of seems like yeah. a pissing contest. Yeah, um, and Fox is gonna lose. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't know. It's just man, that's like makes me even more mad for Dark Phoenix, and we were already pissed off that they might be doing two of them. So. <laughs> Ah, anyway. Get it together, Fox. The Venom movie has some updates here. Um, I believe they're really starting production very soon, for once. Um, But they're looking to adapt the storyline called Lethal Protector from the Venom comics. And this is a little different because Venom has moved across to the West Coast in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. At this point, it is like, you know, taking down dirty cops and like, you know, protecting innocent people, like kind of thing. And um, the filming for Venom has started to take place in San Francisco, which wouldn't make any sense if they were trying not to make it look like somebody else. So, so it sounds like I'm not familiar with the with the storyline. I haven't read it, but is he go- is he going to be a good guy that turns into a bad guy, or is he just going to be like a good guy with a chip on his shoulder, kind of like Frank Castle? Or what's the deal here? Venom's supposed to be a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he Venom's always been an anti-hero, I guess. Kind of like the Punisher. Like, you never know what side. He, he's, like, usually on his own side, like his own mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, you know, he is, like, one of the, vi- like, the, I don't know, these mercenaries are trying to take him out. Like, they, they find him and they're trying to kill him after he's, like, gone away to get away from everything. And he has to... Um, fight these new i guess symbiote offspring this is like the the introduction of like the other symbiote scream phage riot lasher and agony like the the mm-hmm. you know different colorations of venoms <laughs> um but like these mercenaries you know get these symbiote powers and they come looking for venom to i guess weaponize them even more so um i don't know it was from like the mid early 90s and it, it was very spider-man was in it a little bit um like because he saw Venom related stories in the news, but like they could do the whole story without Spider Man in it and probably be yeah. okay. And I guess that makes sense why they would put the movie in San Francisco. Uh, you want to visually kind of separate it and just locally separate it from New York, so you're never worried about like, oh, why isn't Spider Man showing up in this? Well, it's because he's in New York and he's busy. Uh, he's in high school right now. He can't just come out to San Francisco and like mm-hmm. pal around with Venom. Uh, I still am very worried about this movie. Oh yeah, uh, doesn't make it any better. Yeah, we we don't need the movie. I I think one day a Venom movie could work, but just set him up in an actual Spider Man movie, and then maybe go from there if it works. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I so I mean I don't know. I I'm gonna have to look into this. I remember the the symbiote children because I think they appear. Was it Maximum Carnage the video game? Because uh, Carnage is, is, you know, another a child of Venom, the first child of Venom, the more mm-hmm. violent one. So, um, I don't know. We'll have to... I think this was after Carnage, but so it may be leading into a <laughs> symbiote franchise, Mike, a symbiote <laughs> universe. I can't even... God help. I can't, I can't God. take it seriously. Ant may help us. <laughs> uh, the Titan Show, which is debuting on the DC streaming service, is making more uh, moves forward here by casting Beast Boy, ironically. Uh, with uh, the character Ryan Potter, who is the voice of Big Hero, uh, the main guy in Big Hero Six. No, oh. um, I mean that that's cool. We were kind of waiting to see if uh, Beast Boy was kind of for sure going to be in this show, because the main, the first thing that we always think about here over here at the Slate when we're talking about new superhero shows is the budget and the special effects. And Beast Boy, he uh, he transforms into an- into animals. That's his thing. And he's, so, he's got bright green screen the whole time. Yeah, so I mean, if you, um, I mean, I guess you could put real animals trained 
behind the camera or you could CG him. But either way, those are both kind of expensive. So like, is Beast Boy, are they going to kind of just keep him from turning into an animal uh, <laughs> by just saying like he knows karate so he can just like fight as a green person just as normal? But um, I just the, remember... Do the animals he turned into look regular or are they green? They're usually green, at least okay. when I saw it in the in the Teen Titans cartoon show, which is, I think, how most people connect to that series nowadays. Uh, but there were some really cool action sequences where he would kind of transform between animals. Like, you know, he would jump up in the air as, like, a squirrel and, like, come down on somebody as an elephant and then transform into a gorilla and do a punch. So, obviously, in 2D animation, you can do all that kind of stuff very cheaply, but... Yeah, unless this show is just going to be very big budget, you know, and just really be a, a selling point for the DC streaming app, you know, maybe we will see something beyond what we've seen on our other streaming superhero shows. So I'm really looking forward to how they're going to execute this. I, I'm as well. But if I look at pictures of Ryan Potter, other than, you know, what we saw, like the cartoon in, in Big Hero 6, he actually looks like what I imagine Beast Boy would look like uh, uh -huh. as, a, as a kid. Um or human, so I thought that was really cool. And he's also um, actually a um, practicing martial artist as well. So, oh, see, there you go. That answers my question because it's like, well, how do we get him in the fray without transforming into a gorilla because that costs a lot of money? Mm -hmm. Well, just to have him fight like karate. <laughs> and you did share a picture of the Big Hero 6 cartoon show coming out. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, with me, and he's voicing the role Hero Hamada again on that show as well. So well, there you go. He's getting a lot of superhero work. Yeah, that big heroes, that big hero six series looks really great. Two uh, D animation. Uh, they're gonna premiere the the show as like a two part episode movie. I think on Thanksgiving weekend. And then the series will like premiere, I think, in early 2018. So that's kind of cool that we're gonna get get a little taste of it here in a couple weeks. But yeah, really looking forward to that Big Hero Six show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, this guy, I mean, sounds like he's got his foot in all these superhero properties that are big. So I might see him as a, as a couple more. I'm trying to see how many episodes I think Titan said it was gonna be, but I don't think they have an episode. Uh, but just the pilot that's it so yeah um i don't know we'll have to see how this dc streaming service works out and if it works in its favor for for titans yeah justice league is around the corner mike and we've got some news on it as well um the big bang theory promotion may hint at something larger they they put it out this week it's like a you get a facebook and you like spin a wheel to win stuff for it uh -huh. um do you want to know what they may be hinting at i don't think uh... it's, i don't think it's a spoiler but like i don't know okay yeah, yeah, give it to me. They have a Green Lantern logo in the wheel. Oh, okay. I mean, that I don't know if you're a, a Big Bang Theory fan not or not. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> the, I'll just go ahead and say the first couple seasons are really good. We're only watching now just because we're invested. Uh, it, the show's not that great anymore. But the Sheldon, the main uh, character in the show, is a big Green Lantern fan and a Flash fan. Mm -hmm. He's a big DC fan in general. He's always wearing the... The shirt, so maybe that that could easily just be explained by saying well, that Sheldon's a fan of Green Lantern. The only reason I say it's not because it's actually a DC EU designed Green Lantern logo, like darker Ooh. and like it matches the logo aesthetics of the you know the ones Lex Luthor apparently paid to get someone to make for him in the movies. Uh huh. It matches that. It's not just the regular comic book Green Lantern logo slapped in there. <laughs> so they, I mean, they I, paid someone to make this. DC EU green logo green lantern logo and put it on here so so as as much as i want to see green lantern pop up in this movie because green lantern's cool and we like green lantern mm -hmm. uh we still haven't even established the characters that are going to be in the Justice League very well. That, that's not going to stop DC. <laughs> not going to stop them at all. I mean, we got to flesh out the Flash. We really need to fl flesh out Cyborg. We have no idea what his personality is even like yet. Um, we we get we need to understand what's going on with Aquaman. So like I could see maybe like an after credit scene with Green Lantern that might make a little sense. Well, but the other other thing is you know they do mention in that trailer like there are no Green Lanterns. Uh, I think in the last trailer. So they keep leaning towards the Green Lantern thing. They don't even say Superman's in it in the trailers. Like come on, like I don't know I don't know where this is gonna go. And this is not <laughs> making me feel any. I mean I'm excited for it, more excited than you were. But now, like, they've announced there's no press junket for Justice League. They're not letting the press come and see it and then ask questions about the movie. That's not good. <laughs> and the reactions will only arrive four days before the official release. 
Oh, man. Um, so I think there's like some special screenings people will get invited to, and that's like four days before the movie, like November 13th. Because the member movie comes out November 17th, 2017. What else comes out November 17th, Mike? We've talked about this week. <laughs> oh, it's going to be The Punisher. The Punisher. So you get to pick your choice. Um, a questionable Justice League movie or maybe a pretty good Netflix show. I don't know. Netflix <laughs> doesn't have a good history this year so far. A good, a, a high track record. Uh, DC does have a better one with Wonder Woman, but as much as we know about Justice League... Who's gonna save it? So who who knows? It might be a train wreck that we just might enjoy watching. That yeah, um, a disaster <laughs> movie, if you will. Um, uh, I'm just I'm just setting my sights super low. Yes, uh, we were talking about this before the show. We think we're since Justice League and Punisher and the news will all come out in the same week. We might push the Punisher um, spoiler cast back a week, um, so everyone has time to watch all 13 episodes at their own leisure. Justice League, you know, we'll we'll be there probably opening night because we don't want to get spoiled. Um, yeah, very early. I- so, uh, I mean, we've just been lucky in the past with Netflix shows um, if we've been able to watch them the weekend just because we've been free. Uh, but, yeah, The Defenders we were able to do right away because it was eight episodes. But yeah, I think giving people a week to digest Punisher is, is a good idea. Yeah, or or um, also, or maybe a little bit before. I forgot, Mike, that is also Thanksgiving on the 20th. <laughs> So we'll we'll see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, we are we are in a tight we are in a tight schedule that weekend. So we're gonna work our best to get get that out to you. Let you know what we think because because I love talking about that stuff. The Shazam movie got some news today. Uh, the director has announced that um, they're looking for an April 2019 release for this movie. So um, I don't know how excited you are for Shazam, Mike, but <laughs> it's it's around the corner. I don't know, man. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Shazam might be kind of a fun way to almost do Superman kind of right, you know, to go back and redo it the way it should have been done, where he's just kind of like a cool, nice guy that saves people and inspires hope. And Shazam is, you know, obviously he has that kid mentality, but he seems to be a little bit more lighthearted and fun. So maybe we'll have a way to kind of like do Superman how he should have been done in the DCEU, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, I know we've talked about... so. We didn't talk about this, but they are casting the entire Shazam family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I think the, the Shazam character is, like, his name's Captain Marvel, um, which is very confusing because Marvel has <laughs> Captain Marvel, but they, they call uh-huh. him Shazam. And then, like, like Miss Marvel or something like that. Like, there's a bunch of, you know, Superboy kind of things, like Captain Boy or whatever they're going to call him. Boy Marvel. Um Marvel Boy. That's also the Marvel character. It's all confusing. <laughs> don't, don't use the word Marvel when that's your competitor. Um, but I, you know, looking up some stuff on this, Warner brothers has a date in April, 2019 already booked call for April 5th. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Shazam, we've talked about, um, black Adam was on the DC release schedule, but Shazam wasn't, but Shazam is showing up as Warner brothers and DC being the production company mm-hmm. on IMDb. So I think Shazam might be falling back under DC now and taking that April 5th date, uh, in 2019. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. This is going to be a very, very bold move. Uh, really hard to extrapolate and talk about Shazam when we don't even have Justice League out yet. Well, we're talking yeah. about Green Lantern we don't even have, and, and Shazam <laughs> and Aquaman. Uh, like, Aquaman's next, and then Shazam? Like, what? what is going on? So, I don't know. We'll have to follow that one closely. And lastly, the other big piece of news announced this week, Mike, is the han solo movie official title we can stop guessing what it is now (laughs) because it's exactly what we thought it would be it's just called solo a star wars story (laughs) man this that this news seems so old i feel like this came out like this probably the same day a black panther trailer came out but uh yeah this feels like a years away uh but i mean it's the most obvious title some people were kind of bummed out that it wasn't more creative or clever but i mean like yeah what are you gonna do i don't know um ron howard uh, revealed it in a video on twitter i believe um to announce that production had wrapped the movie is releasing may 25th 2018 um i just feel like there's a lot of porn parodies that are gonna get made out of this title (laughs) um so like it's ripe for puns bad jokes and parody but what else are you gonna get from a han solo story i guess like called solo a star wars story i don't know it's an underwhelming title for a movie that nobody asked for um if i was to use an emoji it'd be the one with like the the meh face like yeah whatever 
Yeah, yeah we just uh, yeah. If the, I think if uh, Lord and Miller were still on this movie, I would be a little bit more excited. But uh, I mean, R- Ron Howard, he, you know, he's a man that gets stuff done. So I think at the very least, this movie is going to be unoffensive to us mm-hmm. uh kind of like rogue one was you know yeah you know you didn't we didn't really hate it but you know it was all right it was you know it was entertaining so it's probably just gonna be more of the same <laughs> yeah um i think was it phil lord and miller they didn't direct it but i think they produced um the lego ninjago movie that came out recently mm-hmm. uh, which i wanted to go see it actually did not do very well so they're not well, they're on a losing streak this year yeah i wouldn't really uh I, I, they probably just were producers just i would assume in name like hey guess what the from the people that brought you the lego movies well, they, they weren't even executive <laughs> producers they were straight producers on this so that was i mean that doesn't mean a lot offhand executive producers are usually the one who's not there like 22 jump street they executive <laughs> produce kind of thing but they were directing it. i don't know it's weird but um, they they need to they need to get back in with a win. So let's let's hope well, that they, they get. Well, in. hey, they I think they're on like maybe season three or four of uh, Last Man on Earth, and they uh, produce that show on Fox, and that's a funny show. So if you want some more Lord Miller in your life, mm-hmm. uh, go watch uh, Last Man on Earth. It's good. Yeah, they they did they did direct a couple episodes of that as well, and um, they have a Unikitty TV show coming out. So. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. Uh, Solo, a Star Wars story is is the title, and what we're gonna get in May. And yep, Star Wars it is. We'll end on the Star Wars note, Mike. Um, Always good. If people want to know what you're up to, uh, you've got stuff going on, whatever it is. Sometimes I don't know what you do, Mike. Where can people find that? <laughs> at? Well, you can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to follow you, see that collector core box that you just got, uh, where can they follow you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N. I'll post pictures there. You can head over to Comic UI and check out some stuff there. You can go find uh, my old show, Film Tide Chats, and listen to that as well on iTunes. Or go to YouTube and search the DNN and see the videos we post up there. We, we I do unboxing videos almost every week uh, with uh, one of the hosts over there. So We used to open up the uh, Marvel TV Daredevil Hot Toys figure. Um, so like the the Netflix show Daredevil is pretty cool. He looks really he looks really awesome. So got that going for us. Uh, if people are listening to the show for the first time, we got new listeners like Trevor or Forrest, and then they're telling their friends, and their friends are listening to the show, Mike, and they want to know more about us and where they hear us. Where can they find us at? Hmm. And as always, please visit superheroslate.com. That's the best place to find all the avenue these humans host the show. And to get the show notes to see what we've been talking about, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, email. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and Instagram. You can get Superhero Slate shirts at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. If you're a fan of the show, leave these humans some reviews. They really like that. And if you want to be a super fan of Superhero Slate, just share the show with a friend. Share the show with a buddy, and they will be here every week. Well, most of them. Wait, wait who, who are you? Where's, where's Mike? Mike's not here right now. <laughs> okay, okay, well, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe! Judging from being at the comic book store, Justice League is not high on anybody's list. Man, man, man. All right.